now gives me great pleasure to introduce Marga Ortigas Wedekin. Uh, Marga is a Chief yeah. Commercial Strategy Officer yeah. at Fogarty Innovation. Uh, over 30 years of leadership experience, uh, Marga has enjoyed many successes with companies at various stages of development, and you're going to hear a bit about that as she goes through her presentation, which I got a sneak peek at. But I do want to share this little tidbit with you that she doesn't know I'm going to share about her journey. Uh -huh. um, so Marga experienced an epiphany when she was enrolled in graduate school, in the Graduate School of Business. Uh, she was taking an ethics course, and as an assignment, she interviewed Ron Dolenz. CEO, Advanced Cardiovascular Systems, uh, later Guidant Corporation. I was very caught by this. Um, she was captivated by the way he described the responsibility he and his team shouldered when making decisions for business in which they held patients' lives in their hands. And from this discussion, she saw that there's always a patient, a family, and a provider who benefit from well-developed solution and, solutions and appreciate the dedication uh, that was required for her to realize this opportunity. And so I'd like to welcome Marga and Marga, take it away. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ingrid. That was that was not as, as scary as I thought it might be. <laughs> I had a few things to choose from, but I went with that, Marga. All right. Well, let me try and share my screen here. And um, can everybody see that? The career development, should say. Yes. Okay. Well, um, Ingrid, thank you for the very kind introduction. Um, and I am hoping to just impart a little bit of, of lessons learned, if you will, after 30 years in, in an industry that I truly love. So, um, you know, you know, some people have it figured all out from the time they're eight years old, and some not so much. And in my case, it was sort of half and half because I had figured out the academic uh, part of my life. I'd mapped out my path all through grad school and I met every milestone on time. And I thought, hey, you know, life's like that until I landed uh, a job right after I got my MBA in management consulting. And I hated it. I just hated it. Um, it was it paid great, but I still hated it. So my structured and planned out life ground to a halt. In retrospect, I really thank God for that bump in the road because it led me to my true love, the world of medical technology. And so the little story Ingrid told, that paper I wrote on Ron Dollins, I fished out of the drawer and I sent it right back to Ron and said, hey, remember me? Um, I, I'd really like to work for you after two years of management consulting and lo and behold, he, he got me a job at ACS. Um, and so never, there's a lesson in keep, keep your networks open, just like Kwame said um, earlier, you never know who might be helpful. Um, so as I look back on my own 32 years in, in this industry, I was trying to figure out what sage advice can I impart to, to everybody who is here. Um, and so I started out by looking for patterns in my career and I discovered that there are none. Yes, I climbed the promotion ladder at ACS at Guidant and then jumped to my first startup to take an executive role. But beyond that, were there any specific company types I chose? And I look at them and they're small to large, private to public to nonprofit, no patterns. Maybe it's the roles. Yes, product management and marketing are common threads. But you know, I've done strategic planning and sales and clinical and R&D and international operations and reimbursement. You know, I began to think, am I a jack of trades and a master of none? Jack of all trades. And, you know, at this moment, I think all of you might be thinking, so why did they get this crazy lady to talk to us about career development since she hasn't done any herself? Um, bear with me as I share five lessons in career development that I can look at now retrospectively. And so lesson one, you probably guessed it from my wild patternless career path, be open to new possibilities. So what prevents most of us from taking the plunge and trying something new? It's that little voice in our heads that say, it's saying, what if I don't succeed? What if I make a fool of myself? And I think getting out of your comfort zone is the only way to grow in our career as well as as a person. 
your career will not likely be structured. So I encourage all of you to embrace the unknown and keep your eyes open for new possibilities. Take the plunge every so often. Sometimes that plunge lands you in a very cold and rocky pool. And sometimes the possibility may not turn out to be what you'd hoped for. Yet I found that each time I took a risk that might've gone sideways, there were lessons to be learned. And those are some of the lessons I'm sharing today. There can be great immediate career benefit in keeping an open mind, even for small opportunities. The power of networking has, has already been expressed and, and, you know, and human contact can't be under, understated. Despite the time sink, doing things like joining a peer networking group or starting some fun initiative at work, the kombucha club at iRhythm comes to mind, can be a super rewarding thing. And you might just connect with somebody who can help you in your career, like Ron Dollins when you write a paper. Um, so you take risks. In my unplanned and unstructured career, quite possibly the biggest risk I ever took was to accept an offer to run R&D by the CEO of OmniCell right after he'd hired me. Now, let's get this straight. I'm not an engineer. In fact, I am what they used to call a poet in business school. So I, he, I guess the president, the CEO at, at OmniCell saw something in me that I had not recognized because all my life doing product management in companies, large and small, I'd had to lead teams, including engineers, to develop products for unmet marketing needs, market needs. And that's what the CEO wanted for his company. So I'm going to ask you to think, have you ever been confronted with a request that seemed too big to tackle? Did that little voice in your head overtake your thought process? Or did you leave yourself open to the potential that the requester might be seeing in you? My first reaction to the R&D role, by the way, was to listen to the voice in my head. It said, no way, you have no qualifications. But after that panic died down, I decided to call up the last several heads of engineering I'd worked with and ask them if they thought I could do the job. To a person, they said yes, and I, I did. So that gets me to my next lesson. Seek counsel and embrace feedback. We all have mentors available to us and they come in many different forms. And sometimes we don't even recognize them as mentors until after the fact. As was often the case with me early in my career, I would never have considered my R&D buddies to be mentors while I was working with them. But as it turns out, they gave me some really important counsel at a time that I needed it. That's because many mentor relationships are different. Some are formal, where you meet regularly and have a goal check-in and they hold you accountable. Some mentor relationships can last for a defined period of time, such as when you need feedback or help. Others can be episodic and opportunistic and they can be there for you at a certain inflection point. The main idea here is that in building a successful career, you cannot do it alone. You have to have somebody who can hold up a mirror be a sounding board, give you encouragement, or help you think through a complex problem. And sometimes that mentor may jar you with words you don't want to hear, but they're valuable words nonetheless. Early in my career, the CEO of Guidant, um, Ginger Graham, sat me down and said, can I give you some feedback? <laughs> Here I was feeling really flattered that the CEO would do that, but my jaw dropped when she said, do you realize that you come across as negative when a new idea is presented to you? I, I was flabbergasted. I thought hard about it. I'm a person who immediately thinks that's a great idea. Now, how should we go about and implement it? What are the pitfalls to avoid? What could go wrong? Inevitably, the first half of that thought would stay in my head and the second half, the negative half came out of my mouth. So, I can see how she would say that. And I think she saw that too and, and took that one time dramatic sit down opportunity to forever redirect me. In the end, I could have done something with her observation or not. In the end, you can take your mentor's feedback or not. In the end, you own your own career development. So one of the lessons from taking a plunge um, that I learned, and being open to a new job opportunity, 
was about the value of a highly functional team. As you heard, I started my career at Guidant, a company that had a magical culture, except I didn't recognize it at the time. After 10 years, I felt Guidant got a little too big, too structured for me, and I left to take my first executive role at a very small startup. Little did I know that there could be teams where founders battled, battled with management, where there was no shared company vision or respect for different perspectives. And I quickly learned to appreciate what I'd had before. And I've carried that lesson with me ever since because it is so important. Before I ever, from then on, before I joined a new company or a new team, I'd really examine the team dynamic and ask hard questions to try and determine, do team members support each other, both publicly and privately? In other words, is there backtalk? Is success shared by all, but blame taken individually? At its simplest level, are these folks I'd like to go out and have a drink with after work? How does the team leader encourage the group and deal with dissenting voices? Are decisions being made by the team that I personally am comfortable with? Which leads me to my next lesson. Be true to yourself. There have been times at a company where I've otherwise been very happy but then the company did something that made me pause and reflect on my values. In the most extreme case I've experienced, a newly hired peer level person started doing things to drive sales that I thought was unethical. I tried to explain my comfort to the CEO who at the time was so excited about this new hire that my concerns were dismissed as overly conservative. So I felt I had no choice but to quit and I did. Four months later, that new hire was let go. That lesson served me well as I've had to make other subtler ethical choices in my career and be comfortable with them. Recently, I found this quote by Harvard Business School professor whom I really admire. Clay Christensen is famous for writing The Innovator's Dilemma and coining the term disruptive technology. However, this quote came later in his life when he had battled cancer and was much more circumspect. I came to understand that while many of us might default to measuring our lives by summary statistics, such as dollars accumulated in the bank, the only metrics that will truly matter to my life are the individuals whom I've been able to help one by one to become better people. The specific quote may not be true for all of us on this call, but the career learning point I hope to impart is find your own personal true north and stick to it. And to wrap it up, my favorite philosophers come from life is good. And you, they know it, what it's all about when you're moving along in your career. If you're fired up when you wake up at most days, you're probably on the right road for yourself. If what you do is a grind, if it's only about the paycheck, then where you are right now is probably not right for you. I'd say it's time to be open to some new possibilities, seek feedback from a mentor, find the team that's right for you and be your truest self. So those five lessons come after 30 years. Thanks very much.